Hi everyone. Join us for an insightful conversation with Abhishek Hambad, founder and CEO of Gudera, as we delve into the dynamic intersection of technology, data analytics, and corporate social responsibility that is also known as CSR. Let's discover how Gudera's leading corporate volunteering platform is leveraging cutting-edge technology to maximize social impact. Let's also gain valuable insights from Abhishek's wealth of experience and expertise in the field, offering a glimpse into the future of purpose-driven initiatives and the role of technology in driving positive change. So over to you, Abhishek. How do you see technology maximizing social impact and what role does Gudera's platform play in facilitating this? Great. Thanks, Swamini. Great to be here to answer your question around technology and social impact. Just taking first a 30,000 feet view, you know, unfortunately, the social impact space is probably the last ones to adopt new technology and which should be actually the other way around. Uh, you know, the need is probably the highest here, but for whatever reason, it's the last to adopt technology. I think, uh, you know, when we started Kodera, our belief was that technology can enable scaling of doing good, which is the need of the hour. Our mission is powering the world of good. And essentially, what we do is enable employees of our customers to volunteer. So Kodera is amongst the largest corporate volunteering platforms, enabling millions of employees of our customers to volunteer in 100 plus countries uh, across the globe. And the thesis was that it's it's so easy to book a cab or get a pizza delivered home, but it's just so difficult to volunteer, like finding the right places to volunteer, you know, what will be the experience like, you know, predictability, standardization, quality, the impact of your volunteering. So all of those were things which weren't solved, which we thought technology could solve. And that was the genesis of Kodera is to build a tech platform. We call it in very layman terms, an Airbnb of volunteering. So very similar to an Airbnb platform. We enable volunteering through thousands of car hosts across the world who execute these volunteering events on behalf of nonprofits for the corporates. And what we have realized is if you make it simple, if you make it accessible, if you make it engaging and impactful, millions more people start volunteering, which is you know good for the world because a lot more people do good. It's good for the employees because they build better perspective. They learn something, they feel happier. It's great for teams, it's great for companies, it's great for the nonprofits. It's a win-win for everyone. And that's what we're trying to do. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, what inspired you to write the Forbes article on building a resilient workforce through volunteering? And how does Gudera see the role of employee volunteering evolving in the future workplace? Yeah, I think the future of the workplace is a lot of Gen Z and millennial employees being a majority of the workforce. So we are seeing this big shift of the workforce where this group starts becoming a lot bigger in terms of proportion of employees and slowly getting into more leadership positions. The key characteristic of you know the younger employees is the need for meaning and purpose in their work, which is significantly higher compared to some of the older generation. So that's like a really big thing. The second thing is what we realize is for a lot of younger folks, they want to do good much earlier in their life. So compared to, let's say, parents' generation or, or for the elders, they would think of life as, okay, till 60, you try and have a corporate life or a career, and then you retire and then give back to the society. So that's how the pattern has been. But for a lot of younger folks, it starts probably in their university days or, you know, when they join the workforce for the first time. So they want to contribute and they feel the need and the desire to do something. It's because of multiple factors. And it's almost like religion 2.0 in certain cases where for a lot of younger folks, they want to contribute similar to how it was from a religious perspective, but they want to do it in a different way. And that's where the role of volunteering comes in. And the third big trend is the loss of connection amongst teams with the pandemic. So, you know, with the hybrid workforce, teams don't find the connection between each other, which is really, really important. So these three big aspects of a lot of Gen Z and millennials in the workforce and they needing meaning and purpose to them being wanting to do good much earlier in their life. And the third piece around the lack of connection in teams, all of this basically leads to a big, strong taste 
tailwind for volunteering. So if you look at data, the volunteering, you know, there are a lot of third party reports from Benevity and CECP and third party data, which said that volunteering has increased like more than 50% year on year over the last two years. So there's a big, big increase in volunteering. And there is this you know, demand in the system and there is no way for employees to be able to do it at scale. And that's where Codera comes in. And what we feel is while everyone talks about volunteering is helping the community, helping someone, it also helps the person who is volunteering. So it helps them build perspective, as I mentioned, it helps them feel happier, it helps them become resilient, and it helps them become stronger. Once you see, you know, the broader world and see the problems in the world, your problems start to feel a bit smaller, and you become more stronger. And if you're doing this as a group, you are vulnerable with each other, you are sharing your deepest issues, concerns, weaknesses and strengths and that helps you become stronger as a group and able to face a lot more challenges and you know, we have a whole bunch of employee benefits. There was this New York Times article which mentioned that amongst all the employee benefits from yoga to mental health and all of the things which companies had, the one which probably moved the needle was volunteering in terms of employee happiness. Now, I'm not saying that any of the others are not helpful, but there is this value of volunteering which is becoming a lot more mainstream. So earlier it was good to have some small team responsible for volunteering, not as professional or strategic or scalable within the company. But we are seeing that now becoming a lot more mainstream where CEOs and CHROs are becoming really aware and understanding the importance and wanting to make volunteering a lot more mainstream. And that was the article on Forbes was to share how we are seeing how our customers are evolving, given that we work with some of the world's best and the most innovative companies on how they see the future of the workforce and the role that volunteering plays to create a resilient, connected, purpose-driven workforce of the future. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, your article also mentions the Gudera Impact Innovator Fund launch. Can you share specific examples or success stories where this fund has notably impacted community-minded innovators and their solution to pressing global challenges? Correct. So this fund was launched very recently, so it's still to unlock the value that it intends to have. But I'll tell you the thesis of this and then we can share more examples. So essentially what Kudera does is enable employees to volunteer. For volunteering, you need different ways to volunteer. How can you help and impact the community? We know that the ways to volunteer will come from the community to understand, okay, what are the best ways in which someone could spend their time in the most meaningful way? So you might have certain skills, you might have certain job type basis, you know, you're a retail employee versus on-site employee versus, you know, you would have an HR skill or marketing skill. So there are different skills and job types and different needs in the community. So the role of this fund is to find innovative solutions in the community which employees can help. So for example, one of our popular activities around volunteering is building solar lamps, which are used for, so employees come together, build a solar lamp, which is helpful for, let's say, disaster relief, or it helps people, you know, kids study where there is no access to 24 by 7 electricity, or it is for a lot of the homeless population who don't have access to light. So these solar lamps are helpful for different use cases. It's done through volunteering, but, you know, which lamp to make what should be the battery size how do you make it sturdy but also ensure it is lightweight how do you extend the battery life so that it can work in the harshest conditions so so we have you know a social enterprise who came up with these solutions and these are the kind of innovations that we are trying to fund so this was the first there are certain other companies which work for creating learning aids for people with disability so that's a other kind of social enterprise that we are helping in through this fund so essentially it will be used to fund micro innovations that godera can scale so we would provide capital but also provide avenues where these innovations can be applied and take them to market because we work with so many companies and millions of their employees, we can provide a very solid go-to-market for a lot of these innovations. And for employees, they need different types of volunteering activities. It's a great way to have a variety of volunteering opportunities, which are actually impactful because they're coming from the community need. So, so that's essentially the thesis of the fund. It's very early days, so we will unlock the value over time. But we wanted to ensure that there are so many social enterprises which are doing fantastic 
fantastic work, but they get very limited to a very particular geography because of lack of resources. And that's what we wanted to change is to give them the access to market capital infrastructure to scale and then get the maximum value for from a community impact perspective. Now, what strategic considerations led to selling Godera's global ESG business and how does this align with your long term vision for the company? So I think one thing that we realized as we scaled Godera was the the value of focus and being focused on something that we are really, really great at and which we could be significantly better than the current solutions in the market. And we realized that volunteering is a place that we have in some way built a unique value proposition, which is significantly better compared to the market. And it was scaling really well. And we wanted to be razor focused just on that. And that was a core reason to figure things which are not the core for the company and where you know we can ensure that our best people and all resources are focused on something which is very core to us, which is volunteering. So, so that was the core reason that we decided to do it. You know, it's, it's a journey where you understand and evaluate as an entrepreneur as to what's core and focus for the company and decide basis that. But uh, the key strategic insight was just to be focused on what we are best at. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now with the appointment of Virginia Tenpenny as your chief impact officer, could you elaborate on the strategic vision behind this decision and how it aligns with Gudera's mission? How does her leadership contribute to the company's growth and impact? Sure. So Virginia joined us recently as our president, North America and chief impact officer. She was previously the chief social impact officer at Starbucks, uh, managed a huge portfolio of programs and led a lot of initiatives at Starbucks. I think as, as the company scales and grows, we try and understand where our gaps are and figure who could best fill the gaps, which is relevant from our end customers and stakeholders perspective. I think one of the key things that we wanted to bring on the table was strong domain expertise in the US market. And that is something which there is no one better than Virginia from that perspective. And that was the key piece. The second is we also wanted someone who has seen scale in real life and, you know, Godera being obviously a growing company, you know, someone who has seen scale at Starbucks understands aspects around building the right culture, the right team. How do you think you know, in decades versus, you know, very survival kind of aspect in a startup. So, so you want different perspectives at the leadership table so that you can take the right calls for the company. So, so one was a domain expertise part of it, especially from a US market context. And second was to bring in seasoned leaders who have led teams and seen scale in some of the world's best companies. So, that was a thesis for bringing in Virginia. And, you know, she has been a fantastic addition to our leadership team. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, Virginia also mentions hosting listening sessions and communities across North America in early 2024. So can you share more about Gudera's expansion plans in North America and the specific goals or outcomes you aim to achieve through these sessions? Yes, so we are actually doing a big volunteering summit and a series of sessions in North America. The summit is happening on March 27th and 28th in the Bay Area. I think the key aspect was to understand from the community and our community is just not the corporate. So like one stakeholder for us is the corporates. The second stakeholder is the nonprofits. The third stakeholder is a host who execute volunteering activities of Kodera. And then, you know, our, our team and investors and multiple stakeholders. But these three primary stakeholders, we wanted to spend time, understand their needs and challenges so that we can build the right sort of solutions for them. It's a both informal and formal sessions that we have been doing over the last few weeks and you know with the big summit where we are launching some of the key innovations based on the learnings through the sessions which we have been doing since the last year since Virginia joined in October last year so that's one of our core trends and values is to hear stakeholders and understand their you know jobs to be done their journey their life their challenges their incentives and motivations so that we can solve for them and build something which is most useful and helpful for our stakeholders thank you so much for sharing that now as a startup founder in the social impact space what advice would you offer to other founders looking to incorporate purpose driven initiatives into their companies especially considering the positive impact volunteering can have on employees and the community. 
I think social impact is not different or a unique space. Sometimes it gets construed. I think if you want to start up in any space, you need to be very passionate about the space. You need to, you know, almost like eat, sleep, drink that space. Like you need to know the pulse of that space and understand that deeply. Without understanding the space, you can't build solutions. So the first thing is just be extremely passionate about the space. The second thing is you need to see whether this is a big enough space for you to operate. I think sometimes Sometimes you might not even know the size of the space. So once you build the solution, it just keeps on increasing, which you have seen, you know, with us at Codera, but in a significantly larger scale with, let's say, an Uber, where, you know, the market for cows was limited. But once Uber came in, you know, so many more people started using it. We hope that, you know, with Codera, a lot more people start volunteering. So, you know, that's the piece, I think. And the third thing is just look at scale and the role of technology. I think there is so much that tech could enable scaling, which is the need of the hour. I think the added benefits of the social impact space is the immense gratification that you have that with the company scaling, it just not creates economic value, but a lot of social value as well, which is so much better compared to any other space. So that's the added benefit of the social impact space. It also helps you attract high quality talent. Uh, I think there are lots of people who want to contribute positively to the world, but don't find the avenues to do it. But if you are a startup in the social impact space, you can attract this talent. So I think there are a whole bunch of added benefits to being in the social impact space. And um, if you're passionate about this, there are so many problems to be solved and big, big companies to be built. And as I mentioned, when we started, you know, it's, it's probably amongst the last ones to have high end technology, but you know, it love for more entrepreneurs to build and solve this because you know this would help everyone and it's a win-win for everyone thank you so much for sharing that i'm really glad that you could join us today this is something that i also truly care about and uh, i'm really glad that you know we had this conversation i hope you also enjoyed it yeah absolutely thanks thanks so many